Good morning, and thank you very much to all of you who have devoted a portion of your precious time this morning to tune in, watch, and listen to the State Ministers Association online Sunday service. My name is Reverend Kalu. I am an Associate Minister of the Hong Kong Ganji Hawaii Betsuin, and I hope all of you are in good health and safe during this COVID-19 pandemic that we've been having for the past several months now. Your presence here this morning, even though by computer technology, is an inspiration and encouragement to us ministers to continue on our Nembutsu way of doing temple services. Let us now begin the service at the chanting of the Bandana and Tisarana, which urges us to take refuge in the three treasures of Buddhism, the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. We will now chant the Sutra Jusege, or hymns reaffirming the vows of Amida Buddha to create a perfect world where no suffering or evil exists. Let's now recite the golden chain of love, followed by the singing of the hallowed name of the Buddha, the Nembutsu.
Good morning, and thank you for joining us today in the special online service in observance of an important and special day in the Jodo Shinshu Buddhist tradition. This month is the month the Jodo Shinshu Hongandi sect observes Go Tange, the day of the birth of our founder, Shinran Shonin. This month we commemorate the day Shinran Shonin came into this world, and on this day, we honor and express our gratitude for Shinran, for had he not been born, he would not have encountered Amida the Buddha's primal vow, and our temples, members, and other institutions connected with the Hongganji would not even be existing. This year's observance of the Gotanye comes at a time of great crisis in our country and the world. 
We are in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic that has sickened and claimed the lives of hundreds of thousands of people worldwide. This pandemic has disrupted the economic, social, and religious life of people, and it has curtailed, to some degree, the holding of our religious services at the temples. Let's ponder for a moment and speculate on if Shinran had been alive today, what would he be telling his followers of the Nimbutsu path? Shinran is no stranger to plagues, pandemics, wars, famine, and other calamities, for he himself lived at a very turbulent time in Japanese history. When those calamities, natural or man-made, were happening on a regular basis. Naturally, as a religious teacher spreading the Rembutsu teachings to many, most of the common ordinary people, his followers, would turn to him for answers. Because such calamities as famine and plague cause fear, panic, and confusion, especially in those days when such disasters that cause human suffering cannot yet be explained by modern science. They would ask for his advice in what to do to avoid or lessen the suffering of people, to seek comfort and guidance, as it was in common in those days for the temples and monks to provide such guidance and comfort. What would Shinran's advice be, we might wonder. I would say that Shinran Shonin would continue on to preach amid the Buddha's wisdom and compassion that is constantly present regardless of what people's situation in life are. I would say that Shinran would tell his followers that once they are grasped by Amida's compassion, they will never be abandoned, no matter what the situation is in life. What does that mean in ordinary human turn, or layman's turn rather? To answer that, let me just say this first. Shinran would never tell people to resort to superstition, magic, sorcery, and other forms of practices that are not in accord with the basic Buddhist teaching of the laws of cause and effect. Shinran would never tell people to pray to Amida Buddha to make an epidemic go away miraculously, to make rain fall when there is a drought, for food to miraculously appear out of nowhere for no reason. In the belief that Amida Buddha can create miracles or cure illnesses, no such teaching exists in Buddhism, for these are contrary to the laws of cause and effect. There is, however, a phenomenon in Buddhism, if you can call it, you can call it a miracle maybe, that we can directly attribute to the working of Amida Buddha's vow. And that is the incredible transformation of the mind. The mind of Shinjin, of complete entrusting, is the mind that can handle any difficulty or challenge in life that occurs. Shinran, I would say, would emphasize that suffering is part and parcel of living in samsaric existence, of the imperfect world of being unenlightened, and that as long as sentient beings exist in such an imperfect realm, this delusional world is what brings about suffering in people. This is, after all, precisely the reason why bodhisattvas delay their entrance to Buddhahood, to return to this unenlightened world in order to save those who are still drowning in the sea of samsaric existence. Shinran Shonin would go on to say 
that the transformation brought about by Amida Buddha's grasp enables us to view unavoidable difficulties in life from a positive viewpoint. Once grasped by the vow, we will never be abandoned or let go. We join the ranks of the truly settled, and our birth in the pure land is hereby assured. This means that we shouldn't view the pure land as a place to escape from our sufferings and hasten our going there. The transformation that Shinran was teaching was the concept of Heisei Gojo, meaning that it happens in the present life, not after death. Shinran Shonin, of course, didn't understand himself what caused communicable diseases and how they were spread. But if he were alive today and understood modern science, he would say to his followers and people in general the same things that our healthcare experts would recommend on how to stay safe and healthy during this pandemic. Number one, practice good personal hygiene and sanitation, washing our hands properly and regularly. Number two, keep physical distancing, but not social distancing. We shouldn't feel cold and caring and afraid of other people around us. We just need to be careful not to be too close to prevent the transmission of the virus. Number three, eat the proper food, exercise and get enough sleep to strengthen our resistance to COVID-19. And number four, our elderly and those with pre-existing disease conditions should stay home as much as possible until this pandemic clears up. These advice are no different from the guidelines we already know in this present age. Yes? What Shinran Shonen wouldn't say, and I say wouldn't say, however, is for us to pray directly or make invocations to Amida Buddha to remove the COVID-19 virus and heal those who are already sick or bring those who have unfortunately died back to life. Because these are, of course, not in accord with the Buddhist teachings on impermanence. When we are ill, we go to the doctors and to the hospitals, not to the temple to pray for miracle healing. No amount of candles lit or incense burned will make the coronavirus disappear. Only time and the science of modern medicine will give us the immunity to resist or fight the infection of COVID-19. When we go to the temple and hear the teachings, we gain spiritual solace and comfort by being guided by the teachings and reflecting on our own self, resulting in an appreciation and understanding that will result in a somewhat soothing and calming of our distressed minds. So that with a composed mind, we are able to proceed on with life calmly and with confidence. We can say the Nembutsu if it will bring us comfort and emotional relief. Remember the three treasures of Buddhism which we all recite with each service we do at the temple. The Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. We go to all three for guidance, not deliverance from physical suffering. Let not the notion that there are no physical miracles in Buddhism create in our minds doubts in Amida Buddha's primal vow. Remember, the true miracles in Buddhism happen 
through the mind and not the physical body nor the material world. The Buddha is not like any, not like the deities of other religions who promise physical miracles. And Buddhism doesn't promise any, but it does offer a phenomenal spiritual transformation. Shinran Shonin understood this teaching and clearly stated in his writings that doubt in Amida Buddha's primal vow is the number one hindrance to the attainment of the entrusted mind or Shinjin. No matter how difficult life may appear at the moment for us, nothing is ever, in, nothing is ever permanent except the compassion and wisdom of the of Amida Buddha, which transcend all time and realms. However we choose to believe in the pure land as that of existing in, this, in the here and now, or in a pure land after we leave the physical world, the fact remains that it is the core teaching of the Jodo Shinshu pure land sect of Buddhism. Let us not harbor any doubts of its existence wherever it truly is. We are fortunate that our beloved founder Shinran Shonin came to this world and brought the precious Tembutsu teachings within the reach of ordinary common people. This month, we honor and express our gratitude as we observe the birth of Shinran, who endured many hardships, persecution, and other difficulties in his life, but worked steadfastly to spread the Nembutsu teachings to any and all levels of people who are willing and ready to receive them. More than 800 years since Shinran Shonin's birth and his life as a spiritual leader, his legacy continues on through the Nembutsu teachings we listen to and apply in our daily lives in this modern age. To Shinran, we express a very profound thank you and, of course, happy birthday, Master Shinran. Namo Amida Namo Amida Butz. Namo Amida Butz. I am a link in Amida Buddha's golden chain of love that stretches around the world. I must keep my link bright and strong. I will try to be kind and gentle to every living thing and protect all who are weaker than myself. I will try to think pure and beautiful thoughts, to say pure and beautiful words, and to do pure and beautiful deeds, knowing that on what I do now depends not only my happiness or unhappiness, but also that of others. May every link in Amida Buddha's golden chain of love be bright and strong, and may we all attain perfect peace. Namo Amida Buddha. Namo Amida Buddha. Namo Amida Buddha.
Thank you all very much for joining us today in this online service, remembering and honoring our Father, Shinran Shoni. May we all continue in the path of the Nambutu teachings with Amida Buddha's wisdom and compassion as our guide. Our next speaker next week will be Reverend Toshiyuki Omitani, Resident Minister of the Muiliili Honganji Mission of Hawaii. Thank you all very much. May you have a safe and pleasant day.